All right, welcome back everyone. Uh, this is part seven of our series. Um, real quick, I'm just gonna show you guys what we're doing today. So, oh, I died. Um, we're going to create this little Minecraft styled bar on the bottom. So whenever I scroll up, it now spawns the bigger zombies. If I scroll up again, it goes to the ice one. And so I can kind of scroll through them and spawn anything. And that will be it. So today is a lot of designing. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open our UI. And we're going to actually start a new uh, scene here. And we're going to make a panel. And then in our panel, I'm going to save it. And I'm going to save it as select mob. There we go, dot scene. I'm going to make a script for it. I'm going to create the script in the main scene as well. And then in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add another panel. And then I'm going to duplicate it and add that panel into here. I'm going to rename this one just number one. And then select. And then in here, I'm going to go into the frames and add the sprite zombie, if I can find it. Here we go. And I'm just going to drag it in. Now I'm going to go to the transform and set the position to zero. That's fine. And that's fine for now. All right. So now we're going to hide this because I don't use that yet. I'm going to take this and just drag it. I'm actually going to use the exact same thing that I use for my reference here. Let me just check. And I use 192 and 24. And then. We're going to go down to theme override styles and then create a new style box flat down there. I'm going to click it and the color I'm going to do is I'm going to do 24, 24, 24. So it's like pretty black, but not a, not 100% black yet. And then we're going to go into cord and radius. I'm going to set it to 555. Five, five. And then border, border width, we're going to leave it. And that is it for the style. And then the visibility, we're also going to set the modulate to 200. You don't have to do this step, but it just makes it feel a bit more transparent and not walk into your face. Uh, Minecraft is 100% opacity, but um, in this one, I'm going to leave it like this, um, mm -hmm. just because that's the style I like to do. All right, now we're going to make this guy visible. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to I'm actually going to um, I'm going to check the uh, my reference and see this the size I have for everything. So for this one, this one is twenty four, nope, twenty four by twenty four, and then the select should also be the same size, so twenty four by twenty four, I believe. And then for the select to make it look a bit nicer, what we're going to do is go into theme override. And I played around a lot with this. So I was going to copy over the um, things that I have. So the settings. So I did 555 five, five for the corner radius. Um, I do blend it because this is going to be the select. In the border width, it's going to be 10, 10, 10, 10. And then the background color is actually going to be 0. So make it invisible because we want this to actually feel like I have something selected, right? So, and then in here, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to theme override, I'm going to go into the style box and let me just check what I have there. Um, in here, I actually, where is it? Visibility. I actually modulate this one a little bit as well and I make it, 150. And I'm also going to just check the override. And I do, what is it? Border. Nope, we're not going to mess with the border. We're going to go to the corner radius and I do 555 five, five, five to make it the same as the select. All right. And then the color, I'll keep it the same. Um, you can kind of play around with it. Um, but yeah. I just left it like that. And then the pixel, I'm going to lock this. I'm also going to lock that. I'm going to take the picture, and I'm just going to drag it into the middle by turning off the snap grid. 
and there we go. And it's kind of in the middle right there. Kind of play around with the placing, but that's what we're going to do for that. All right, next thing we're going to do is duplicate it. And we don't have to change anything. We just have to go down here and rename it. Um, we can actually rename this to, um, I don't know, just image. It doesn't matter what it is. Uh, image. And then we go down here. We're going to find another zombie. And we're going to add in this guy. And then we're going to duplicate one more time. And then I'm going to add the ice zombie for that one. And then for this, I'm going to, I'm not going to turn on snap grid for this. I'm actually going to unlock that and then move it over so that it's right beside that one. Make that one visible. Oh, unlock that first, unlock that as well. And then I'm going to move that over to that one there. And you can place it around however you want it. But this is how I'm going to make it. All right, so now that we have three things to select from, next thing we have to do is actually add it. So I'm going to rename this to select mob. I'm also going to rename this script because it should have been named as panel, I believe. Or did it? No, it wasn't. It actually did say properly. OK, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delete all this, and I'm going to make a variable called selected equals zero. And basically what this is, is it's going to be the current thing that we're holding, the current select that we're going to be spawning, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to check for input. So function input two, two, dot event. And then we're going to check if input dot um, is action rest yeah and then we're going to actually we didn't code it yet so we have to do that so we have to go product settings um, input map and then we're going to do select up add that and then select down and then in the select down i'm going to go to mouse button and then wheel down add that and the select up i'm going to do wheel up and then add that and now I go into the action pressed. I do select it. Oh, it doesn't autocomplete for me. Select up. Hopefully that corrects. I'm going to do pass. OK, cool. No errors. And then what we're going to do is um, select it as equals 1, right? And then I can duplicate this and then subtract 1. And then when I do down, whoops, I'm going to subtract one. So I'm going to go downwards in our little selection here, right? All right, next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to check um, when, if something is selected, what do I do, right? So there's a really easy way to do this. One way to do this is you can check if um, selected equals zero, make sure that this is, um, this is visible, but this isn't or whatever, like there's a, you can do that, but that'll, it'll, you'll have a bunch of lines and there's no point in doing that. There's an easier way to do that. And so what we can do is get child um, selected, right? So we're going to get child zero, which is the first one. So this is this one. And then we're going to dot get child zero dot show. And so what this does um, is we're going to essentially pretend we have these ones off and then this one is on, right? So if we have the first one selected, it's going to be visible as if we have this selected. And we're going to turn that off and then turn this on if we scroll upwards, right? So that's how we select different ones. So I'm going to turn them off. I'm going to turn them all on, actually. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another function. This is going to be our function. I'm going to name it hide um, non, uh, I'll say hide all. There we go. And then what we're going to do in here is we're going to for loop in all our children. Children count. And then we're going to get child dot i get child zero dot hide. 
All right, so what we're doing here is we're for looping between I and the child count, right? Which is one, two, three. So we have three children, so we're going to for loop three times. And we're going to get the first child, which is child zero, because it starts at zero, right? I starts at zero. So child zero, it's going to get this one and hide it. And it's going to go down, get this one, and hide it. It's going to go down, get this one, and hide it. So if you don't know how to for loop works, um, I have a video for that, actually. You can check it out. Um, but this is basically how it works. Um, so next thing we can do is if we do do something, we're going to, like if we do click something and we select something, we're going to hide all, right? So we want to call this function every time we kind of change a selection, right? So now I'm going to go on my UI and I'm going to drag in select mob and I'm going to drag it to the bottom where I kind of want it. Put it right there. It's kind of centered. All right, so now if I run it, I can kind of select. However, you might notice there's a problem. So if I scroll too low or too high, there's an issue, right? One other thing I'm going to do real quick is function ready. We're going to hide all right away because what's happening is that all of them are starting selected, right? And we don't want that. All right, so now every time I go up or down, I want to check if I'm going too high or too low. Right, so if um, selected, this one actually took me a little while to think of. I don't know why. I don't think of, but get right. So get child count minus one. Then we'll add one. So essentially, what we're doing is if the selected is smaller than the child count minus one, then we can keep going up because the child count is going to ch count the children. So it's going to count three here. However, selected goes up to, should only go up to two, right? Because of the way that computers count usually, right? So I count from zero, not from one. Um, and then from here, we're going to do if selected is greater than or equal to one, then we can subtract one. So now if I run it, we have a little scrolling wheel that works and no errors. So I can scroll down and up and it's fine. All right, so that's it for the selected mob. So this works properly, which is nice. So we can close this, close this. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go into our player. So we want to add three different mobs that we're going to actually be spawning. So the first one is going to be, let me double check what I called them. Boop, boop, boop. friendly small zombie and then this one is going to be called ice zombie all right and now i'm going to go to my mobs friendly zombie I'm going to go into 2d scene and i'm going to duplicate this twice so i'm going to do friendly small zombie and i'm going to do duplicate it again and then friendly ice zombie this part is very easy. There's nothing complicated here. So we're going to go into the small zombie. We're going to rename it small zombie. Go to the animated sprite. We're going to delete all these. And then we're going to, oh, it's right there. So we can just take the run animation, put it in there, and then the idle animation, and drag that in. All right, there we go. So now our small zombie is working. Close that, open our ice zombie. We're going to rename this to friendly ice zombie. We're to go into the animated sprites, delete all that. Oh, let me just double check. I'm not messing with anything. Okay, yeah, I don't think I am. All right, delete all that. We're going to scroll. I uh, we're just going to search it up. Ice zombie. There we go. Uh, run animation. Drag that in. And then idle animation and drag that in. All right, so now we're going to go into our player. We're going to replace these preloads. So this is the ice zombie. I can drag in the ice zombie. And then for the friendly zombie, I'll do the small zombie or the small zombie. Yeah. And then next thing we're gonna do is in the timeout, every time our, our timer times out, we're going to check which one is actually selected. So what we're gonna do is we're going to actually create this variable outside of the checking, right? So we're going to do this. Now I'm just gonna 
I'll just delete that and cop make sure I copy this. So make sure you copy this line before deleting it um, because that's what I'm going to be copy pasting. So you can check with if this, this, that, whatever, um, if selected is equal to this. And that works. Um, but something else that I kind of learned that also works, and this is unique to Godot, not other languages have this, but we can do match get node. Um, we're going to check the UI. So we're going to drag the UI in here. And then we're going to do slash selected. What is it called? I forgot. Select mob. Select mob. There we go. Dot selected. So this is a bit tricky because what's going to happen, what's happening is we're trying to access a node that doesn't technically exist um, within this scene, but it is, it does exist. It is in, in the UI, right? It's just not local. So it's going to go into the UI and then dot slash select mob, right? So you have to make sure you, you type it in correctly, otherwise it'll error. And then what we're going to do is if it's zero, so if the match selected dot zero is zero, we are going to instance the friendly zombie. If it's one, we're going to, I'm just going to copy paste all this. So now your code should look like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to set the friendly zombie and instance the friendly zombie if it's select, if we have zero selected. If we have one selected, I hope you remember, we have this small zombie selected, right? And then this one is the ice zombie. So now if I play it and I run around, I'm sp spawning the normal one. If I scroll up, it'll spawn the swan. If I scroll up again, it'll start spawning the ice ones. Awesome. So now we have different spawning. So you can spawn different monsters and run around and play. Cool. And you can kind of play around with this. Um, yeah, you can play around with the UI and make it as big or small as you want. Um, but yeah, now we no longer have clicking spawning, which is kind of spammy. Um, now we just move around. And then later on, what we can try to do is maybe add some shooting. So we can go like, move here and then shoot there, move, shoot, move, shoot, whatever. So we can make the game a bit more interactive. Um, next thing we're going to do in the next video is most likely we will add mana. And then if we have time, we will add projectiles. So stay tuned, subscribe for that. Um, like the video, comment down below if you like the video. Um, again, they really do help. They really encourage me. Uh, yeah, I hope you guys like the video. I'll see you guys next time.